Assalamu alaikum everyone, I hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to talk about endotoxins. But before starting the lecture, I like to tell you that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. And also, if you are new to my channel, a very warm welcome to you. Endotoxins Endotoxins are present in gram-negative bacteria. Endotoxins are found in outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. If you remember the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria from my bacterial structure video, then this is going to be really easy for you. Endotoxins are also called lipopolysaccharides, LPS. These are the components that are made by bacterial DNA or chromosomes. Gram-negative bacteria has following components. The bacterial DNA or chromosomes, then ribosomes, inner membrane, prostaglandins, outer membrane containing the LPS, lipopolysaccharide, which are actually the endotoxins, and an envelope or capsule. This is the gram negative cocci, and this one is the gram negative rod. I thought to put both of them in this picture so it becomes easy for you that whether it's a gram negative rod or is a gram negative cocci. The thing is that both have got the same structure, the difference is just in their shape, like one is long and the other one is circular. This is the bacterial DNA, this black one, and these dots are the ribosomes. Then we've got the inner membrane, it has got this lipid bilayer. Then these are the prostaglandins, then we've got outer membrane and the capsule. The only important thing that I wanted to mention here is this one. This is the LPS, having its three elements, the lipid A, this red one, this core polysaccharide, and this one, the O antigen. And let's talk about them. Lipopolysaccharides have got following components. Number one, this red lipid A, it is immunogenic. This one is the core polysaccharide, and this is the O antigen, this spiral one. It has antigenic properties, but it, its antigenic properties are less as compared to lipid A. At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to tell that lipid A is responsible for most of the endotoxins infection. How LPS cause infection in human beings? It is because of lipid A. Because lipid A has got following three important functions. Number one, it activates macrophages. It is a part of intrinsic immune system. Then it also activates complement system. The third important function is that lipid A activates tissue factor or factor three. As I mentioned, that lipid A has got three functions. Number one is activation of macrophages. This is the Q macrophage. Then we've got these complement proteins. Lipid A is also responsible for activating the complement system. And then we've got this tissue factor, the factor 3 lipid A also activates this one. We're talking about the pathogenesis by lipid A. I want to tell you that macrophages contain certain receptors on their outer surface. Number one is toll-like receptor. We abbreviate is at TLR. It's the fourth one. And then we've got CD14. In some books it was mentioned 14 and on some places on internet I found it 15. So I think 14 is right because I found that one in book. Now let's talk about the, how lipid A activates macrophages and how macrophages play a role in the pathogenesis caused by lipid A. Lipid A binds onto these receptors on macrophages and and then activates macrophages to release certain cytokines, for example, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrotic factor alpha, and nitric oxide. Here you can see this is the lipopolysaccharide, the endotoxin. This one, it's lipid A. This is the lipid bilayer stuff. This is lipid A. It is responsible for doing well. It just goes and binds onto these receptors and responsible for releasing these cytokines, interleukin 1 and 6, tumor necrotic factor alpha, and nitric oxide. Don't worry, we are going to discuss the rest of the diagram. Interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 along with tumor necrotic factor alpha they just go and activate the hypothalamus. There is a specific part of the hypothalamus that is responsible for maintaining our body's temperature. So when they are going to act on that part this is going to increase the body temperature. What is the increased body temperature called? Guess? Yeah that's called fever. 
So the first symptom that we recognized is going to be the fever. Human necrotic factor alpha along with nitric oxide does what? Well. It increases the capillary permeability and also is responsible for vasodilation and the combined effect of these two leads to hypertension. Okay, let me tell you something. All this is going to cause hypertension. It is going to increase the diameter. Vasodilation means increasing the diameter of the vessel. And when the diameter is increased along with the increased capillary permeability, it will leak south of fluid. And fluid will be leaked out, it will lead to decreased blood volume. And also, it will lower the peripheral resistance. That will lead to low blood pressure. So, low blood pressure is termed as hypotension. Interleukin 1 and interleukin 6, along with tumor necrotic factor alpha, just go and act on the part of hypothalamus that is responsible for regulating the body temperature. And this will cause fever, number one symptom. And tumor necrotic factor alpha along with nitric oxide just go and acts on the blood vessels. It leads to vasodilation, increased capillary permeability that leads to hypotension. In normal conditions, body needs to perfuse tissues to give them ATP for proper functioning. But due to persistent hypertension, it can cause other organs to fail. And which organs will be failed? These include kidneys, that will be acute renal failure, and it can also cause acute liver failure, heart failure, and lungs will not properly oxygenate the blood. So when these vital organs stop functioning, this is called multi-system organ failure or dysfunction. Here you can visualize that persistent hypertension can lead to failure of these vital organs that will cause multi-system organ failure. Fever, hypertension, and multi-system organ failure. These resemble the symptoms of septic shock or septicemia. These three symptoms, the three main symptoms, fever, hypertension, and multi-system organ failure, will cause what? Septic shock or septicemia. We're going to talk about the second function of the lipid A, that is, it activates the complement system. There are certain complement system proteins. This lecture, C3A and C5A are important. Let's talk about them. C3A activates basophils and mast cells. These cells produce histamine. Histamine does what? It causes vasodilation and it increases the capillary permeability. Vasodilation by relaxing the smooth muscles. Increased capillary permeability is caused by endothelial cells contraction when they contract a little bit. These two things combine and they lead to hypertension along with edema. This is the coccyte has got this antibody and this is a complement system. It gives us that C3A protein. This acts on the basophils and mast cells. They release what? Histamine. And histamine does what? It just, it just go and dilate the blood vessels, which is termed as vasodilation, and increase the capillary permeability. That leads to what? Hypertension. And also, increased vascular or capillary permeability will leak the fluid out. So, so it will cause edema. What about C5A? It stimulates the neutrophils and it induces neutrophil chemotaxis, which means it will attract more and more neutrophils to the site. And these neutrophils are the immune cells and they will start their function and this will result in increased inflammation. That C5A is going to stimulate neutrophil and will cause neutrophil chemotaxis. More neutrophils will be attracted to the site and will lead to increased inflammation. Now that lipid A has activated macrophages, it has activated complement system, the thing we are left with is the lipid A activates the factor 3. Lipopolysaccharide stimulates the factor 3. How? Its lipid A component is going to do that. The role of factor 3 is that it will go and it will stimulate the factor 7 in the blood vessel and the factor 7 will in turn activate the factor 10. The factor 10 will stimulate thrombin and guess what thrombin does? Thrombin converts fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrin form fibrin mesh leading to clot formation. This is factor 3. If someone has got increased LPS, the lipopolysaccharides in their blood, what is going to happen? This will go and stimulate the factor 3. Factor 3 will stimulate the factor 7. It will in turn activate the factor 10. Factor 10 will does what? Well. It will just go and activate the thrombin. Thrombin will convert the fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrin has got two important functions. Number one, it is going to do what? Well. 
it is going to form the fibrin mesh that will lead to clot formation. If there is increased LPS, which means that fibrin will form more and more clots. Number two thing that the fibrin does actually, it forms more and more clots, so all the factors and coagulation proteins are consumed. They are used, which means that there is increased risk to bleed. It has consumed all the clotting proteins. This is going to increase the risk of bleeding. You might be thinking that there is clot formation and also there is bleeding. What the heck is this? This disease is called disseminated intravascular coagulation. The disease containing clots widespread throughout the body along with the bleeding is termed as DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. This along with that will lead to DIC. In a nutshell, lipid A causes fever, hypertension, multi-system organ failure or dysfunction. They are going to cause septic shock or septicemia. There is also going to be disseminated intravascular coagulation, increased inflammation. These five lead to SIRS. SIRS is Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. As now we've discussed about endotoxins, I wanted you guys to memorize that with this 7E formula. As endotoxins start with the letter E, so I've got this formula for you. Every word that I've written there contains E, and I've highlighted that word in red color so you can memorize easily. And I've also highlighted the E of endotoxins red. 7E formula mnemonic is fever, hypertension, multi-system organ failure, septicemia, edema, increased inflammation, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments section. And also, I've got all of my social media here. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I rarely upload blogs. Till next time, assalamu alaikum.